used to think I was so ugly. Now I look back, I'm like, oh my God, you don't realize how nice you were. And now look at you now, you look like Jabba the Hutt. Nikocado Avocado, YouTube's biggest laughing stock, so it seems. This guy's going crazy! This man is not healthy, and everybody could see it. Leave me alone! He was a very healthy person, but then he started to notice that the videos that gained a lot of traction were videos where he was just fucking gluttonous and eating a million calories per sitting. <laughs> But lately, all of the jokes about Nikocado Avocado have turned to concern as Nikocado's health seems to be getting worse and worse. Human to human, take care of yourself, bro. Beyond all of this internet persona, YouTuber, all beyond all of this, you got you. And just as another guy on the internet, take care of you. Nikocado Avocado. Hope you're doing okay, buddy. I joke around sometimes, but I feel like everyone on YouTube cares about your well-being, so... Please take care of yourself. It's hard to see you eating yourself away. All the best. Still gonna roast you though. Love, Leo. So, who is Nikocado Avocado and why did he destroy his life for YouTube fame and fortune? Hi friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering influencers and influencer scams. And if you like videos like these, then don't forget to subscribe if you want to. If you like this video, then give it a like also if you want to. Don't forget to check out my second channel, which will be linked down in the description if you're feeling kind of bored in between the longer uploads on my channel. And now let's get into the video. Now first, before we get into this, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. My mouth is spicy. <sighs> Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video because having online protection is very important. No joke, the other day something happened with my email where someone put it into some sort of spam system and I was getting almost a hundred spam emails an hour. And believe it or not, I myself am not very technologically minded. So I didn't know how to protect myself online without a system like a VPN. And since I was actually in talks with working with Atlas VPN, right when I started getting these emails, I went and purchased a year of their service to see how it worked because it was definitely time that I started protecting myself and my online activity. I waited way too long for that. And I was shocked, but so happy to find that literally the second I installed Atlas VPN, all the spammy emails completely went away and I stopped getting them, which was a huge relief to me. On top of that, Atlas VPN has a ton of other benefits. Atlas VPN has the best deals on the market right now. For just $139 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee, Atlas VPN is the most affordable online protection. And you could say Atlas VPN protects your wallets too. My wallet. The other benefit is you can protect an unlimited number of devices with a single Atlas VPN subscription. When I purchased Atlas VPN, I put it on my computer and my smartphone and feel super protected. And whether you're gaming or streaming your favorite show, enjoy super fast speeds. <laughs> With Atlas VPN, you can also get the best deals when shopping online, including all of your online subscriptions, which at least in my case, I have a lot of them. So that's a huge bonus right there. And the thing that I found was the most beneficial to me is that Atlas VPN is more than just a VPN. Atlas VPN also blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. I definitely recommend Atlas VPN, at least for me, it made me feel super secure and helpful 
helped me a lot with a lot of scary things that I was dealing with at the time. So if you want to access a great deal to Atlas VPN, I feel like I'm using this as like a wand, click our special link in the description and get access to the Atlas VPN with 86% off. And thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring. And thank you to anyone who clicks the link in the description to help out this channel. That really means a lot to me. And now let's get into um, this whole thing and the weird world of Nikocado Avocado. This is an interesting video. This is definitely a first for me. Nikocado Avocado is a mukbang YouTuber known for his shocking and sometimes disturbing online antics. I'm seeing stars. I'm seeing stars. I'm seeing stars. Popeye's chicken sandwich. Popeye's chicken sandwich. Popeye's chicken sandwich. No! 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 <laughs> He runs multiple channels with views and subscribers that have reached massive numbers, but in that time, well, Nikocado grew a little bit too, which has led to subsequent health problems. It hurts when I press, it hurts when I twist my body, it hurts when I sit down or stand up. I am not okay at all. I am not okay. Ouch! 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 Let's talk, okay? Because I am not okay. Oh my god. Oh my god! And a lot of concerned fans and fellow YouTubers. Even knowing better. Even knowing that it's a complete detriment to his overall health and well-being. He continues to do it while still having that small glimmer of self-awareness. Now, before we continue with this story, I think it's important to mention that in this video, I will not be fat shaming Nikocado Avocado. And I do believe that people can make the life choices that they want to as long as it's not harming others relatively. But the problem is Nikocado Avocado is a social media star who shares his life with millions. Some believe that Nikocado is glorifying his lifestyle to his audience. He is slowly killing himself and documenting the journey the entire time while having an understanding of exactly what he's doing because his audience continues to eat it up. While others believe that Nikocado Avocado existing on YouTube is a cautionary tale to others. Either way, the curious case of Nikocado Avocado is one worth examining from start to finish to understand how someone can go from this. Hi everyone, I have my little sloths, so I am back to this. To understand how he, and maybe even we as a society, got to this point. The story of Nikocado Avocado really leaves me with one question that I continue to ask myself throughout this story. Is fame and money a reason to sacrifice everything in your life and to become a total laughing stock? It seems that to Nikocado Avocado, it is all worth it. You wouldn't switch money for skinniness? No. I really do what I do for money, that's really it. Money and viewers. But should others follow in his footsteps? To understand this further, and the sacrifices that Nikocado Avocado has made for YouTube fame, we have to look at where he first began and his start on YouTube. Hi, my name is Nick. I also go by Nikocado Avocado on social media. Nikocado Avocado did not start out as who he is today. In fact, Nikocado Avocado was a talented and very accomplished musician before his time on YouTube.
The decline of Nikocado Avocado was a slow and gradual one as he joined YouTube and then sacrificed everything he had going for himself for YouTube fame. The Nikocado Avocado as most know him is just an online persona, a fictional character that the real Nick created and portrayed, from whom the real Nick suffered real consequences. So I hope you know I'm an actor. I mean, I majored in performance. I'm just here trying to entertain people and be funny and have a good time. And this is how I make my money, you know? This is this is my job. So who is the person behind the persona? Nikocado Avocado YouTube channel. This is a mukbang channel operated by a content creator named Nicholas Perry. Good morning, little sloths. Welcome to my mukbang. Hi, my name's Nick. I also go by Nikocado Avocado. I am back with my mukbang. Nicholas Perry, the creator of Nikocado Avocado, has seemingly a lot more depth than his online fictional character, who pretty much just eats and cries. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> According to his LinkedIn, Nicholas Perry was a musical prodigy, studying at the Pennsylvania Governor's School for the Arts on a full tuition scholarship in 2000. He also attended the Catholic University of America and obtained a Bachelor in Music from 2010 to 2012 on a full tuition scholarship, and from 2010 to 2011 was on the Dean's List Honor Roll. He also attended the Benjamin T. Rome School of Music on a full tuition scholarship. So Nicholas Perry was extremely talented and Knowledge. educated in the world of music and had a promising start to a career as a violinist. Nicholas Perry was also a performer at the New York Music Festival from June of 2012 to 2013 and won Best Musical and six NYMF awards. He was also a performer for MAC Cosmetics, which I guess is a thing, and that's very interesting. But Nicholas Perry, down the line, decided to trade in his career as a violinist in exchange for that YouTube cash money. How can I be mad, bitch? I sleep in a mansion! Nick's LinkedIn description, at least I think it's his LinkedIn, it has all of his information on it, reads, With over 1.2 billion views and 4 million combined YouTube subscribers across five channels, which, let's be honest, is a super impressive feat. Nicholas Perry, known by his online alias Nikocado Avocado, hosts the largest American mukbang series on YouTube. Mukbangs are when you just eat on camera, and that's about it. His fictional character is known for his dramatic, comedic, and theatrical performances over a ginormous pile of food. They said it, not me. So how did Nicholas Perry go from talented violinist to this? I pooped. I said, oh my god. It's like leaking through the chair. And let's eat the whole thing. I'm so like loose back there. Ella. Nicholas Perry was born in Ukraine, but was adopted early in life and grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In 2019, Nikocado Avocado did an interview with Trisha Paytas for Trisha Paytas' podcast, in which he opened up a lot about his early life. Nick said that as a result of finding out that he was adopted earlier in his life, he began to act out and received various mental health interventions as a child. Yeah, I was in and out of therapy since I was like five. Were you loud? <laughs> were you obnoxious? Were you being mean? What was your attention seeking? All of it. Just like one of the spotlight, which is so different of how I am now. They put me on medication too. 
At five? Or seven. Seven was my first time. Seven? So loft, yeah. Nicholas Perry also told Trisha Paytas that he was prescribed antidepressants when he was seven years old, and then later as a preteen was diagnosed with ADD and OCD. Yeah, they put me on medication too. They say I have ADD and OCD. But luckily, Nick had found his love of music and soon began his venture into the music world. For a while, Nick worked as a freelance violinist, and at the age of 21, moved to New York with the dream of playing in a pit orchestra for a Broadway show. Wait, so what were you doing before you two? What was your job? Freelance violinist. Really? But I wasn't, I mean, I was good at it. It was just really hard to make a living off of it. Very hard. My dream was to be in the pit orchestra, so I used to like watch uh, the book. Did you ever see Ghost the Musical? Yes. I went into the pit for that to like hang out with my Shut violin friends. Up. I was there, and Mamma Mia, uh, Lion King. For Broadway? Lion King, yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't playing. I was learning to be an understudy for one of the violinists. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, so that was my dream. The only problem is making it in New York as any artist or talented individual can be a really tough life. And Nick really struggled to compete with the plethora of other talented musicians. You were good. Yeah, but the thing is, a million other people could do what I could do. Mm -hmm. It's Especially for Broadway tunes, it's not like super flashy, hard, mm -hmm. um, like, concertos or something where you have to like be really really skilled in order to make it sound good it was a lot simpler so more people can do it and it wasn't even so much about ability it was more so about who you know the connections and i was just one small little fish in a huge sea mm -hmm. so. another huge aspect of nicholas perry's persona at this time was his veganism well there are so many reasons why veganism is just taking over the planet i mean this is a movement that's spreading and this is how the name Nikocado avocado began, because one of Nick's favorite foods was an avocado. I've eaten more avocados than any other person on earth. Harry gained a following off of his vegan brand and collaborating with other vegan YouTubers. You know how I always did my Chopstick in there, you know, we can't do that already. Avocado also met his husband Orlin in a Facebook group for vegan men, which I'm sure he considers a huge benefit to his time as a vegan, but I'm not sure if the internet would agree. Okay, so it's a blessing in disguise, like I said. You're so fat, your lungs are being squeezed by fat. You're big, you're big, you're big. You're bigger. <laughs> Yeah, don't appreciate your husband. It's cold. Good, you need to call a shower because the old shower. Get out. I'm gonna break down the blood pressure. Get out. It's an old pilot. Okay, I'm gonna be married to you. Why would you do this the day before our wedding? Why do you have to turn off the illusion of a happy marriage? Why do you have to turn me off for my own husband? Wait, wait. What do you mean do what before marriage? You mean? Have a digestive system? I made it for you, with love. Stop! Just for Stop you. it! Just for you. Just Stop! Out. Enjoy it. Out! You, you forgot. Stop! Stop! I made it just for you, honey. No salt, so I won't burn your eyes. <gasps> I think you know the wall. Nicholas Perry became more and more known as Nikocado Avocado as his following as a vegan YouTuber increased. But eventually, and obviously, his time as a vegan YouTuber came to an end. And lots of drama ensued when Nikocado Avocado uploaded a video in 2016 making a very dramatic exit from the vegan community. I went out and I bought sardines. I have never even had sardines in my entire life. I don't even focus. That's sardines. Now, it's basically Sebastian from Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't want to eat flounder, the fish. Uh, I've been debating in my head for the last hour, basically, about making this video. It still has crumbs from my mukbang, but whatever. Because I'm scared and I'm confused. And I don't want people to hate me because of what I eat. We were not designed, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in the stars, whether you believe in the psychic twins like I do. We're omnivores. We're omnivores. Nikocado claimed that he was never vegan enough for the vegan community and was frustrated with them and no longer going to be a vegan. Really fed up with the vegan online scene on YouTube. That kind of really pushed me to make this video because I've been having those thoughts and feelings for quite a while now. Crazy, crazy comments from vegans, of course, saying I'm not vegan enough. Later on, Nikocado also claimed that veganism actually had negative effects on his health, attributing a rotted tooth, a vitamin B12 deficiency, and hypoglycemia to his vegan diet. When I went vegan, I was like, well, see, I was under the false 
pretense or belief that, oh, if you go vegan and natural, you can cure your depression, cure your mental disorders, cure your any, like it was like a cure for all. And they think I was just this beacon of health. <laughs> yeah. I rotted a tooth. I had low B12, B12 deficiency. My sex drive was terrible. Really? Terrible. I wondered that, okay. Terrible. Wow. Um, I developed hypoglycemia. I don't know if it's directly related to the veganism, but I never had that before. What's well, hypoglycemia? So your blood sugar drops really low. So all of a sudden, Nikocado Avocado went from a YouTube channel built off of his brand of being a vegan and veganism, where he had a community of vegan friends to leaving that community and having nothing. Basically, Nikocado Avocado had to start all over over on his YouTube channel. I'm no longer vegan. <laughs> I could cry in tears of joy. You guys, it was too hard. So Nick Akato set his sights on a new trend that was about to take off. That is the mukbang phenomenon. Everyone victimizes everyone. Plants victimize other plants. They kill each other. They constrict each other. Vines will constrict other plants and wrap themselves around and choke the life out of them so they can't get to the top of the rainforest. Does that make it wrong? Are they selfish? Are they victimizing? Mukbang videos were first popularized in South Korea in 2010. It's estimated that the mukbang trend began sometime around 2009 in South Korea. Mukbangers called broadcast jockeys in Korea would have nightly scheduled eating shows where they'd often cook and enthusiastically eat on camera via live stream. Fans would tune in for an interactive experience where they could chat with each other and the host over a meal, an often rather large meal. So what is a mukbang? Or what are mukbangs? The word mukbang is a combination of the Korean words for eating and broadcasting. And mukbang videos usually consist of a host filming and uploading a video eating a large amount of food in front of an audience. Mm. <coughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> In the world of mukbang, bigger doesn't seem to be only better, but a requirement. It's been said that if you're eating a normal portion of food in a mukbang, it's not a mukbang, it's just eating food on camera. Huge quantities of foods are very common in both American and Korean mukbangs on YouTube, and seem to be a prerequisite for success in the genre, with creators regularly sitting down to four, five, six thousand calorie feasts. After doing a ton of research into now two very popular Western mukbangers, Trisha Paytas and Nikocado Avocado, I also have my own theories about why mukbangs are so popular. First, loneliness. It's nice to be able to sit down and eat a meal with somebody or share a special meal, but with the rise of internet and social media, one could say that we've become more and more isolated, especially in 2020. So it might be nice to watch a YouTuber or streamer eating a meal so that you feel like you're sharing a meal with somebody. It sort of fills the void of silence that our mind often gives. It also can be really fascinating to observe different diets and eating habits from different people around the world. In general, I would say we're all pretty fascinated with food and cuisine, some more than others, of course, and it can always be interesting to see how others eat and what they eat and how they eat it. 
maybe gives us inspiration for meals that we'd like to eat, or is just something interesting to sort of ponder at. Today, watching people eat is ridiculously popular content in Korea, America, and many other countries around the world. Top creators can regularly bring in tens of millions of views per video. Mukbanger B Loves Life claims she became a millionaire in just 15 months of making this content. According to Nikocado Avocado himself, and something I also observed, which is sort of the most unsettling part of mukbangs, a lot of people will choose to watch mukbangs or people eating large amounts of food in front of a camera instead of eating themselves. I'm resulting in more weight loss success stories because people watch me eat for them. Whether to help them lose weight or to fuel their own EDs. <laughs> I noticed when looking through mukbang videos to research this video and also my Trisha Paytas video, it is really hard to eat and talk on camera. There are a ton of comments under these videos talking about how they're watching these YouTubers eat instead of eating themselves. Now, I myself am not an expert on nutrition or EDs, but I am curious on the psychological effect that that might have to watch someone eat in place of eating yourself, as well as the potential damage that could do to a person. According to one of the very few authors of a paper on mukbangs, this simulated eating effect can be so strong that it completely satisfies cravings and even makes people feel full as if they had truly eaten something. This effect has been named vicarious satiation, and you can see evidence of it throughout the comments as well. My coworkers keep telling me not to tempt myself, but this is surprisingly satisfying. I'm working to lose weight. Instead of triggering my sweet tooth cravings, these videos seem to satisfy them. You know what I realized? Every single time I'm hungry, I watch mukbangs, so it feels like I actually ate something. Either way, mukbanging, is that a word? Has become a massive content category on YouTube, where YouTubers have gained an audience of millions and millions in revenue. I have food, I can pay my bills, and it just, right. like, my life seems more normal than when I was skinny, but I was also, like, struggling a lot more. You so. wouldn't switch money for skinniness? No. It's hard to know whether or not Nikocado knew that his mukbangs were gonna take off or whether he just lucked out. Because Nikocado Avocado was one of the first American men to ever start a mukbang channel. Welcome to my mukbang. <gasps> But very soon, Nikocado began to notice, along with well-esteemed industry colleagues like Trisha Paytas, I kid, I joke, that drama and controversy, trolling, clickbait with dramatic titles and an obscene amount of food is what garnered him the most views. So my videos where I'm having issues, a lot of it is stemming from like something wrong in me. So I'm just like, well, fuck it. I'm, everyone already hates me or I'm already dramatic. Let me just grab the camera and just like film it. So some of them are like really, really real for me, mm -hmm. um, even though there's no context or no one even understands why. And well, a lot of Nikocado Avocado's antics worked really, really well, with some of Nikocado's videos garnering tens of millions of views. So logically, if something's working, why stop? So Nikocado Avocado went deeper and deeper into large mukbangs, binge eating, and drama content, which brings us to where we are and he is now. This is kind of relaxing though. <laughs> Filming yourself eating is definitely a lot low, more low stress than my videos. Even if you're just doing it to troll or attention, there comes to a point where it's too much. I'm off to go see a doctor because this is really serious. <laughs> ouch, 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 I can't get up. I'm 
in the living room. Being a YouTuber can be both a blessing and a curse. You're pretty much tied to what your audience thinks of you, whether it's the truth or not. Thank you for watching my train wreck of a channel. So I hope you know I'm an actor. I mean, I majored in performance and I've always, I always wanted to be on Broadway doing a show, whether that was acting or singing or dance. I used to do dance. This is my thing. People take it very seriously. They think I'm like really mentally wrong. And I do have mental issues like a lot, like most people. Most people have things that they're mentally not well in. A lot of people, like I said, they take it seriously and they're really mean about it. I'm just here trying to entertain people and be funny and have a good time. And this is how I make my money, you know? This is this is my job now. You're bound by what your audience wants to see. I noticed in the beginning of your videos, you look a little bit smaller. It's nice to be here. I'm gonna be doing this a lot more regularly now. Oh yeah. I've gained like 50 pounds. This isn't healthy. I know it's not. Let's figure out a way to do this. Oh my God. And if you want to grow, you have to continue to escalate your antics more and more and more. So if you're making videos with large mukbangs, your mukbangs have to get bigger and bigger. If you're creating drama content, we have to talk. your videos have to get more and more dramatic. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. In and out, in and out. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Hold me too, movement. Hashtag me too. You should hold your head in shame. There's nothing wrong with eating food. Do you not eat to survive? I know you're this skinny little old man. Does he live with anyone? Does he have a girlfriend or a boyfriend? What does he do with his life? Does he not put food on his table? And if you're trolling, you have to get more and more trollier. This is the trap that a lot of YouTubers will find themselves in, and while Nikocado fell right into that trap, and unfortunately has experienced major consequences. Welcome to Eat It For A Living. But things for Nikocado Avocado aren't all bad, right? Because while Nikocado Avocado's health continued to decline, his bank account continued to rise. Click the link below, Click the link below to follow my Patreon. You get exclusive weekly. You're gonna buy my merch so I can afford to eat. Click that link down in the description box. Or click the link that I pin in the comment section. I'm so rich. Nikocado Avocado's net worth off of YouTube alone is estimated at 3 million. 3 million from doing this <laughs> and posting it on the internet. Nikocado Avocado also has merch in a shop called It's Just Waterweight. But Nikocado Avocado doesn't just make his money off of YouTube. He sells cameos for $150 for five minutes. Hi, hi, happy belated birthday. I'm so sorry I missed it. He also has a Patreon and an OnlyFans. Oh, f right off. I don't know what I'm doing. The first thing I get greeted with is this dick, man. Oh. <coughs> Want to pound my fat ass? No. God, no. Eat it. All of this funds a $2.3 million penthouse where Nikocado Avocado resides. Wow. 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 He's built a strange and odd empire off of mukbangs and drama videos but is all of this worth the sacrifice to his health and future more and more people have recently become very concerned with the public decline in health that nikocado avocado is currently experiencing what's up on the scale 297.4 <laughs> Oh, 
Nikocado Avocado's escalation of binge videos, drama, and trolling seem to all reach ahead in 2021. He claims to have three broken ribs, which is attributed to his incredible weight gain. Incredible being the wrong word, really just astonishingly upsetting weight gain that he's been putting on recently. He claims that the weight of his body has now broken a few of his ribs, which now has him bedridden. And he also claimed to now have to have a full-time nurse in order for him to just engage in day-to-day -day activities. And he also has been diagnosed with sleep apnea, I believe, which is why you'll see on his most recent thumbnails, he has like that machine hooked up to his nose that makes him look like some kind of like cyborg from the future or something. It, it, it seems to really be going down so quickly for him. People have been saying for the last couple of years that Nikado Avocado is literally killing himself for YouTube views, and it's absolutely true. He is slowly killing himself and documenting the journey the entire time while having an understanding of exactly what he's doing. He's well aware that he is throwing away his health, his well-being, his happiness for the sake of some YouTube views because his audience continues to eat it up. Oh, just to get another battery, it's gonna die. I have to cough. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> Ouch. Ah. Ouch. 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 And I'll try not to cough because if I cough, my ribs get pressure. There's a lot of fluid. I'm a, I'm a, try. <coughs> Ouch! People used to roll their eyes at Nikocado Avocado's drama content. His many, many breakups with his husband Orlin. What are you upset for? Because I hate you. I lost everything because of you. I said in Colombia, be happy without you. Without you. I remember what I was thinking. Okay. His, um, pooping problem? <laughs> but now people aren't just rolling their eyes anymore because Nick Akato Avocado's latest content has really taken a dark turn. I broke three ribs, I'm still recovering. It hurts when I press, it hurts when I twist my body. <laughs> it hurts when I sit down or stand up. Nick Akato uploaded a video on October 5th of 2021 titled, My New Diet as a Disabled Person, and claimed he has broken ribs that he's recovering from due to his weight gain. I'm officially bad bound for at least seven days. Look. He also wears a breathing apparatus, which he claims he's always owned. Well, this basically, it's not oxygen. It just pumps air into you to prevent you from snoring so you can get that deep REM sleep. You're always supposed to wear it when you sleep, but I'm wearing it during the day. Thanks to you guys. And after this video, Nikocado Avocado continued to post more and more concerning videos. And from this, a ton of YouTubers began to express concern, which Nikocado Avocado took as the perfect opportunity to spark some drama content for those views and clout. So if Nikocado Avocado is just doing all of this for views, which he clearly is, should people play into it and continue to express concern? Or is it really nobody's business what Nikocado Avocado does anyways, even if it is slowly killing him? Anything YouTube related is gonna be uh, exploited to the max, I guess you could say. I just find it weird how this kind of stuff YouTube is just, and I'm not saying they shouldn't do anything about it, I'm just saying, observing how it works. Like, this is all fine. Like, Mr. The Animal is just blatantly promoting obesity. I know they're not condoning it, especially Nikocado has never condoned it, but you know, it has its effect that Still, kids are impressionable, right? As someone who's tried, you are stupid. Nikocado Avocado or Nicholas Perry created a fake persona that slowly but surely began to take over his entire life. And now he's suffering the consequences. And there are multiple petitions that are calling to ban Nikocado Avocado for his possibly harmful content, not just to himself, but to others who he may be encouraging to live this kind of lifestyle. He is slowly killing himself and documenting the journey the entire time while having an understanding of exactly what he's doing. He's well aware that he is throwing away his health, his well being, his happiness for the sake of some YouTube views because his audience continues to eat it up. <laughs> Disabled if it weren't for you people who encourage these videos. This is six dollars. Ouch, my ribs! He said it's your fault for encouraging these videos. Now he he says shit like this pretty often, and it shows me that there's still some self-awareness deep within him somewhere, locked locked deep away. 
One could say that many people, or even most people, create online fake personas to a certain extent. My Instagram bio says, here are some pics that makes my life seem better than it actually is. We all show on social media what we want to be perceived as, whether it's the real us or not. But Nikocado Avocado is a good example that the lives that we live online can directly impact our real lives, whether we realize it or not. Social media as a whole is not a vacuum or something that's separate from our real lives, but is actually completely intertwined with the real us. And I hope that one day Nikocado Avocado realizes this and stops the act that he's put on before it literally destroys him. Nikocado Avocado is 29 and once claimed he'd be done with mukbang content by the age of 35. But will he? When will Nikocado Avocado stop and when will these antics come? Come to an end, as all things eventually do, one way or another. No one is safe from becoming irrelevant, no matter how hard they might try. And I can't help but wonder, what will become of Nikocado Avocado after his career and time in the spotlight? Will his former fame and money gained even matter if his life after the fact is completely ruined? I'd say in the grand scheme of things, Nikocado Avocado is still pretty young, yet he gave up on the chance of a vibrant and healthy life for a chance at YouTube fame and fortune. But at the end of the day, it is Nikocado Avocado's life and he can do what he wants with it, no matter how concerned others may be. He does have the right to live his life the way he wants to, and who knows, maybe he is living his life to the fullest and truly enjoying himself. Ouch! But I can't help but feel sad for Nikocado Avocado and the dark situation that he's put himself in, and I hope he's able to turn his life around before it's too late, because eventually everything that we know will come to an end, and we'll have to find a way to move on and move forward. As far as toxic and harmful YouTubers go, I would say Nikocado Avocado isn't as harmful as others besides maybe the dangerous diet culture and lifestyle that he may be spreading and promoting. Our relationship with food goes far beyond our physical health, as there does appear to be a strong connection between food and what we eat and our emotions. Apart from those aspects, I do think that Nikocado Avocado is deserving of empathy and compassion and understanding from others. So I want to end this video on a positive note and say that I wish Nikocado Avocado nothing but the best, and I do truly hope that he's able to live his life to the fullest in exactly the way that he wants to. And that's all for today's video. I hope that it was informative, interesting, and overall, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, comment down below who you think I should cover next, and I'll see you in the next video. Hope you're doing well until then. Bye.